I am I'm Marsha Imgard Smallin. I currently serve as the principal of Glenmere High School, <laughs> the number one traditional high school in the country. Uh, and a proud past student, of course, of Bethlehem Moravian College. I am passionate about education and I am driven by my personal vision statement, igniting hopes, dreams, and possibilities for all. Education is my life and it is how I just want to impact my country, impact the world by elevating, empowering and, you know, elevating the people who are within my influence. And that's basically who I am. I am Lucinda Peart, a past student of Bethlehem Moravian Training College for Women formerly abbreviated as BTC. I went to college 60 years ago, this year, January, um, no, 62, this year, January, is the 60th anniversary of my graduation from the esteemed Bethlehem College. Um, I was president of the batch of the college, then it was called Prefect. And uh, having gone through my education process, I worked at Bethlehem as vice principal for seven years and retired after two years as principal of the college. So I'm the first student who has reach to the stage of being the principal of the college. Hello, my name is Chanel Espirit. I'm a very God-fearing, charismatic, and humble individual, a past student of Bethlehem Moravian College, currently a teacher at Bishop Gibson High School for Girls. I am Kimani Roach, an educator, teacher of mathematics for the past five years, currently serving at Knox College, and a past student of Bethlehem Moravian College. I'm Michael Malcolm. I am a past student of Bethlehem Moravian College. I'm very proud of that. And I'm also now a lecturer here, of which I think is my proudest moment in my academic pursuit. Quite frankly, um, actually, I had applied to a number of colleges and I had gotten a response from Bethlehem first. I went and did the interview and felt at home immediately. And though I would have heard from other institutions, I just made the decision that that's where I wanted to be. And I have no regrets. I'm happy that God placed me there. Because um, I'm a Moravian, born and bred. And of course, Bethlehem is a Moravian college. So I had no choice let alone the other colleges we could go, Michael and Shortwood, are in Kingston. And uh, my parents and uh, the community would not like me to go into Kingston. There was a bad reputation for Kingston. They thought I would be spoiled. But Bethlehem, with the Moravian ministers there, a Moravian minister being the principal of the college, and of course we heard wonderful things about Bethlehem, that the men who wanted good wives chose Bethlehem women. 
when it was just a female college. I chose Bethlehem Moravian College because of the career path that I wanted to venture into, which was to become a teacher, and I wanted a change of environment. I am from Manchester, and so I saw it fit to attend Bethlehem Moravian College. Well, I chose BMC because upon leaving high school, I realized my potential. I had a love for mathematics, and I noticed that I needed the pedagogical grounds in order to make myself more marketable and upon research i realized bmc was the hub for potential teachers and so i decided to choose bmc um i bethlehem chose me as a student um i have a very colorful history i was taken here by my mother who thought that this was the best place for me to be i had chosen another career path that she wasn't quite pleased with. And so I remember sometime close to the middle of the term, she came to Spanish Town where I was and took me all the way down here and left me here with the acting principal at that time, Mrs. Sarah, Dr. Sarah Williams. And the rest is, as they say, is history for me. After graduating, I thought of Bethlehem as a wonderful place. I enjoyed my life at Bethlehem. There were not so many buildings. There were only 30 of us in my batch. So the three years amounted to 100 of us. And we had large commons to go about and reflect and study and write. And it, it was a home away from home with the difference, you know, with the academic excellence that we had there. I recommended many, many other persons to go to Bethlehem College. It was the college, and I still think it is the college of choice. My Bethlehem Moravian College is my second home. That's really where the heart is. It really molded and shaped me into the individual who I am today. And so for me, it's just pure greatness when I think about BMC. Well, um, after graduating, many thoughts, uh, good thoughts, bad thoughts, in between thoughts. Um, mostly though, I think of BMC as a place where potential is realized, where persons can come and be accepted and experience new things, socialize and just really learn how to improve their skills. I believe that Bethlehem um, was and still is the premier tertiary institution for teacher training in Jamaica. Um, we have a proud history here at Bethlehem and our graduates will tell you that our teachers are always sought after. A matter of fact, many of them will tell you that even before graduation, they were offered a job because of the distinguished record that we have out there in the world of work. And so I still hold that Bethlehem still produce the best teachers in Jamaica. Mrs. Wilson taught me research and it was my favorite because of the, the skill sets and the values that I learned. Not so much about the content of the subject, but it taught me the value of being punctual. It taught me the importance of making sacrifices. You know, we had 7 a.m. classes and we had to be there on time. We could not be a second late. And at the time, to be honest with you, I was upset that we were locked out many times for being a few minutes late. But as I grew older, as I started to teach professionally as I started to serve as principal, I realized, you know, the value of just being punctual, respecting your classmates, respecting um, your lecturer who has made the sacrifice to be punctual. And it is a habit, I believe, that helps us to be successful in, in other areas. So yes, research with Mrs. Wilson, um, it, it stands out in my mind and 
my business subjects, of course, that Mrs. Bateman <laughs> taught me. I, I cannot leave that out. Um, she was very firm. I think Mrs. Bateman set the most difficult tests. I think she could win a world record for setting those tests. And it doesn't matter how hard you studied, you know you're going to get um, sometimes a one-figure grade and you wonder why. But when you get into that exam, we usually do well because we're expecting it to be at the same level. And so we would put in more effort and usually produce better grades at the end of the day. So I have some great memories and I could go on and on, but for those two, it stands out quite vividly in my mind. Class? Well, that's some, I just enjoyed everything. <laughs> I, if you ask me about my favorite tutors, then that would be a different question. But the thing about it is that all my subject areas were favorites for me. I went to college to learn, to excel, and I just loved every class. I love music appreciation. We had music appreciation just next door to the music room there, that same room, but it was parted. And the one, the section nearest to the nurses' quarters was a music appreciation. It was a little lounge and a music appreciation class. And um, I enjoyed classical music so much. First, I was introduced to it, so much so that I promised that every month I would buy an LP. And I passed that down to my children. So when my son started to work, he gave me several um, CDs, cassettes then, and CDs, classical music. Um, but my specialist here, I had a hard time knowing what to specialize because we did all the subject areas in first year and then specialized in second year. So it was really a matter of prayer and discussion to choose. So I chose math and science because I had excelled in all the areas. So I chose math and science. I suppose that would have been good for me you now if I were a young student, what with the STEM. But um, then it was just, oh, bright people would do math and science. Yes. So I suppose it has come down to the point to say, since, um, to answer your question then, my favorites were math and science eventually. All the classes at Bethlehem Moravian College, they were, they were fun. And of course, you know, the teachers know what they're doing. And so it's very hard to choose a favorite. I enjoyed all of them, but I just want to say big up to all the lecturers at Bethlehem Moravian College. They are very phenomenal. Well, I had many. <laughs> I don't have a favorite, but I have many class that I liked, mostly calculus. I had a love for calculus. Two reasons, the lecturer, Mr. Frith, he was very good at what he did and he would work with us. So I enjoyed his classes. Yes, as I said, I was um, Circle Kale, served as president for two consecutive years and I would have learned so much. You know, the habits of excellence that I would have cultivated over the years, the survival skills, it is through Circle K that I can um, organize fundraisers and other events because it's a part of what we did. Um, I, can, I can jerk the best pork through Circle K. I can jerk the best pork through Circle K. And just that humanitarian side of me, just reaching out to the vulnerable, reaching out to people who are in need, simply paying it forward. And that's a big part of what I do. So I encourage all the students at Bethlehem to ensure that they actively participate in at least one 
um, co-curricular activity because academics alone won't cut it at all. Or it was, you know the word, it's a new word, more city. It was a more city. We never thought that we could have shunned classes or shunned extracurricular activities. And when I felt the cold water on my hands one day this week, I said, Oh my Lord, this was the sort of temperature water we had to shower with after going to the play field to practice for netball. I was a shoot in netball and they used to say, Look, Lucinda, you don't have to try, you just put the ball in at the net. And I continued playing netball until, even after I was married with my three children, I was still on a teacher's team at my school playing netball. But I did surgery, and after that, I, you know, I said I should give it up. Yes, sir, I did. Of course, I was the president of the Young Professionals Club. I am a former McGill president. I was a part of the netball club. I was a part of the netball team. I was a part of all the clubs at Bethlehem Moravian College. As you know that the guild president automatically becomes a member of all the clubs. So yes, I was highly active at Bethlehem Moravian College. So I was a drama right while I was here. I have a love for drama. I served as the president of the drama club. Yes, I, I was what you would consider to be a sports billy. I was involved in everything. And if you check the yearbook before and after my time, then you will see my name there etched, especially in the house report where my house, Washington House, was always fighting for championship. We don't usually win, but we have never come last. And I can tell you that between Dr. Carl White and myself, we were always tussling for champion boy. Luckily enough, I got it have it. I've always been a champion boy when I was here. So I took part in athletics, track and field, represented the college at the tertiary level um, at intercollegiate sports. And I was also, uh, I consider myself to be a good footballer at the time. And I did some amount of volleyball too. I played cricket, but I didn't love it. It, it, it was a game that didn't love me but I was involved in every aspect of college life. Bethlehem was my training ground in more ways than one. Jesus have mercy. My most embarrassing experience, and I won't hesitate to say this one because I've never had this experience before. I was coming from chapel one Sunday in my heels, and you know, it's tush like, whoa, you know, well-dressed and everything. And of course, I fell on Fleming's Hill and the meals created a lot of noise. So from then, if I'm going down the hill, I made sure that I, my shoes bottom was rubbery, or if not, I simply take them off and walk down barefooted. It was embarrassing, but I am not alone. Several females will tell you that they've had that experience. At Bethlehem, as a student, Yes, I remember one distinctly and the way I worked it through. In fact, there were two. One of them, there was a student, a batchmate of mine, who was cheating during an examination and I reported her because I was the head of the class and I reported her. She was not upset with me but the other students, the second years and the third years came down on me like hawks that I should not have reported the student. I, I just felt honesty was honesty and she should not have been cheating in the examination. It was so bad that I prayed to God to help in those days Students, once you fail the subject, you had to sit out a whole year. And I, I prayed God. I, I was a very dedicated Christian I, I, from very young and my teenage years. I went to college when I was 18. And um, I prayed and asked God not to allow her to have to sit out of college. 
I said, God, make me sit out of college instead of the student. That was the effect it had on me. And you know what? The Lord allowed her to return to college, although she failed a subject. And I just rejoiced. We became very good friends. Even now, she's one of my batchmates that corresponds with me. I, I, of course, I have embarrassing experiences, but I cannot think of one to really quote now, but really and truly, I think what was embarrassing for me, yes, how could I forget this one? Of course, I am an Ashtonite, and of course, I want my host to win, and you know Ashtonite, we're going to participate, and that, as a result, as a result of that, I ended up running the relay and my relay team came in last. Still proud. <laughs> oh yes, I did. Um, I remember when I was in first year, uh, our principal at the time, Dr. Wilson, <laughs> she was one who, you had to stick to the rules. And <laughs> I can remember wearing a pants <laughs> that was not allowed and she called me out right in the middle of the school <laughs> so that was an embarrassing moment for me however it was one that i you know learned from and i still know to follow the rules up to this day wherever i go um yes there was this lady um one of our lecturers mrs merdina richards miss merdina richards and uh, Miss Lewis at the time, they were responsible for the language program here at the college. And I remember I always used this word mistress instead of miss, Mrs. or Miss. And I remember I used it once when I was talking with Miss Richards and she promptly corrected me in front of my friends. I was embarrassed then, but then she took me under her wings and I used to wait for her by Fleming every evening and accompanying her to her flat where she would give me English lessons. And so, even though it was my most embarrassing, it also became one of my proudest moments. <laughs> yes, I do have a few. All right, so you know that going to devotion in the mornings was like a mandatory. And my roommates and I were, of course, in the room and we were cooking. And you know, we are not supposed to cook on the dorm. And uh, we heard a knock on the door and my friend, I won't call her name, but my friend said, if you're ugly, you can come. And the uh, person opened the door. When the person opened the door, it was none other than Mrs. Peart. Yes, we found that extremely funny. I mean, just the look on my friend's face, she was shocked. She couldn't say a thing. She couldn't move. It was, it was hilarious. It was. Yes. Um, that in the dining room, we had the privilege of dining with our, with our, um, our lecturers, principal, vice principal, lecturers every day except Saturday and Sunday. So um, the prefect would hit a gong for grace and anybody could be called on to say grace. Now the principal's six-year-old son was at a table. His name was Robin and Pre, we just say Pre, Pre said, Robin, could you say grace for us? And Robin in his best style said, bless the Lord of my soul and forget all his benefits. And of course, instead of Amen, it was an uproarious laughter in the, in the dining room. And I, I forgot, I should show you the dining room. I, I'll get a picture of it and show you. Um, it was dining room downstairs and dormitory upstairs, but I didn't live in that dormitory. Um, so many things if if there if there was 
anything that happened in the in the in the dining room for example or music teacher reverend craig was cutting johnny cakes at breakfast one morning and the johnny cake float of his plate and of course everybody was laughing and since then johnny cakes were not called johnny cakes they were called jump out so you see we were students different settings but different attitudes but we, we were students students will always be students and we had a lot of fun we dressed up every Saturday evening for formal dinner. And um, after that, we had what was called friv, right? Don't stay the lounge of, um, of Fleming. So those who wanted to dance could dance. Others played board games or just sat around and chatted. And that was our fun. <sighs> As I said, that place is home. And of course, there are so many funny memories. I mean, just the, you know, typical day on the dorm, it's pure fun, right? Because you meet some people who change your life. And of course, classes, they are so fun. And so there are many fun memories at that I have for Bethlehem Moravian College, right? So it's really hard to pick out one. But just know that dorm life, classes, the overall college experience is very fun. I can't forget the football matches that we normally have. Those football matches, I enjoy them thoroughly. <laughs> from the own goals from, you know. <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. Um, the most, some of the, some fun memories that I have here um, was with my group. Um, we were very close as a group. Um, I studied mathematics, so we cling together as a group. We would cook together. <laughs> I was living on dorm, so we would cook together. We studied together. <laughs> we had fun. And those were some of the good memories. We would go and raid the fruit trees <laughs> on campus. Wherever the trees are, we would find them. So there were a lot of fun memories. Always. I remember one sports day when I was certain that after all our efforts, we were going to be crowned champion house. Washington House was going to be crowned champion. And all we needed to do was to win one of the three last events that were on. Three, three track and field events. I think they were relays. And um, after we won the first one, we started celebrating and we were told by the officials that we were disqualified. And we went on to the second one, did the same, and we were told that we were disqualified again. And by the third event, we said this is our last chance of winning championship. And we were disqualified from the third event. And um, you know what I did? I, I took my house off the field. My sports master at the time, Mr. George Henry, will remember, and my principal, um, Dr. Dr. Watson, will remember that I, I marched my delegation of Washingtonian of the field because we were so upset over the fact. And you know, young men and women were full of energy, adrenaline were flowing. We just thought that there was nothing that could stop us then. And then we were told that we were disqualified and that relegated us to second position that year. And it was quite a, a blow to us as a house because we know the effort that we had put into working hard to win the championship. As I've said before, um, yes, and the content that's passed on to us, you know, of course you need that kind of foundation, but outside of that, the habits of excellence, of being punctual, being courteous. Um, I remember Mrs. Bateman was a stickler for a healthy, clean, productive learning environment. She would not start a class unless it was immaculately clean and we had to do it. Um, the survival skills, the ways in which the lecturers would have reached out to us in personal ways. And then now I realize that to my own students, to my own staff members, you must always have a listening ear, which I benefited from in college. There were persons who really looked out for us and treated us as a family. 
and it is important for us to pass on these same kinds of habits. Um, I studied very hard when I was in college, um, really wanted to prove to myself that I was capable, having underperformed here at Glenmere as a student in high school. And so I, I did the best I could to ensure that I, I got good grades. It didn't materialize there, but at least I got the support from the lecturers. I got the support from my batch mates as well. And going into further studies, my bachelor's degree, my master's degree, my doctoral degree, some of those same skill sets, you know, and being able to make the sacrifices needed to, to excel, not just to do well, because you know, we don't believe in the C's and so we always want to produce the A's. It is what we aim for. And it has helped me definitely um, in, in more than one ways to, to make the sacrifice, to go above and beyond to ensure that you achieve the outcomes that you want and the spiritual aspect of it. Yes, we used to dodge um, the devotion sometimes, but we did appreciate the fact that we had to make Christ the center of everything that we do. And I have carried that with me. And for those persons who are close to me, know that, you know, I would say all the time, commit whatever you do to the Lord and he will establish them. And the other verse I love is, God is before all things and through him, all things hold together. So the spiritual nurturing is definitely something that I have brought with me and will take me to my grave. I, I did appreciate that. I would say Bethlehem Moravian College prepared me um, in a holistic way in that in every area I can see everything that I went through at Bethlehem Moravian College. You know, it was very hard. Sometimes I ask myself, why? But no, I'm seeing the end result. Those sleepless nights and of course those terrible coursework pieces and everything, you know, that makes me disciplined and of course teaches me to manage my time wisely because I do need those things. You know, teamwork, I find myself join on all those things learned at college here in the working world. So definitely. Having completed um, BMC, I developed the pedagogical skills and I became more grown in teaching and learning and educational research. And that has helped me a lot. Um, while serving as a teacher, I now have all the strategies, all the pedagogical skills and assessment skills that I need to engage my students in teaching and learning. Ah, um, I, I alluded earlier to the fact that Bethlehem was my training ground. And it was my training ground because we had lecturers then, and we still do, who cared about students, who cared about the welfare of the students. And it went beyond merely imparting knowledge to us. They, they, they treated us like family then. And so all of us here felt as if we were a part of something greater than ourselves, that we were made to believe and trained to believe that we were going to determine what happens to our society because we were going out there to train young minds that were going to, in a sense, and determine the ebb and flow of what should take place in our society. And I believe that Bethlehem did that for me and for the many others who would have passed through our hollow halls, that it did prepare us because of how our lecturers and all the other persons that were here that looked after our welfare, from the kitchen staff, to the ground staff, to the security, to the admin staff, everybody, to our nurses, they all looked after every single one of us to make us feel as if this is home from home. In many cases, they treated us more than family. Please go. Please go and experience what higher education is really about. I mean, the climate is, is excellent. Um, it might not be the same as before, 
but you know really nice clean climate i know that the lecturers are a grade um they will definitely treat them as a family and uh, in terms of preparation for our professional lives if we take it seriously we know that when we start teaching or in whatever other fields we get into we will not only stand out but we will show up and show out and and be make a difference in our respective organizations institutions so i say go to the number one college and i'm not just saying it because i went there but i would have experienced firsthand the vast benefits of being a part of that family my advice for bethlehem look on the advertisements and believe everything you see there they <laughs> they the college is an old seasoned college with a reputation we are the second oldest college teachers college in jamaica and um this the climate is salubrious it it lends itself to study to emotional calmness and there are so many areas that are there for you to choose. I was the one who suggested the name Bethlehem Moravian College because along with the principal and the leader of the pre-college section, um, we worked on getting Bethlehem to be a multidisciplinary institution. So when we sat together, I said, well, we, we can't call it Teachers College again. So we'll call it Bethlehem Moravian College. So Bethlehem Moravian College is a college that is all inclusive. You, we, although it's a Moravian College, we, nobody tries to indoctrinate Moravianism into any students. And I think you would agree with that. We are liberal and we seek to help students to grow. Although while the students are there, just as when I was there, students did not feel they wanted to go home. We wanted to go home. And we were, <laughs> we were there going home only on holidays. So we went in January, went home Easter, we went home August, we went home December. Unless there was some trauma at home or you were quite ill, you remained in college all the terms. They were called terms then, not semesters. And, and the year was January to December. But in 1962, the year began with, uh, in September, okay? So go to Bethlehem, you will enjoy it. And of course, we are on par with any other teacher's college, any other college in the world, in the subject areas we offer. And the lecturers who teach them. My advice to persons who are interested in attending Bethlehem Moravian College is go for it. You won't regret. Bethlehem Moravian College is the school of choice. So don't let anything hinder you, right? We're very understanding. Just get to the office, sign up online and get going. Don't wait. Don't wait. Just start, you know. Um, don't worry about, you know, sometimes worry about the small things but as soon as you join the bmc family you will have persons looking out for you in many ways so just start and you will enjoy it bmc now is reflecting what society needs and so we have moved away from being just a teacher training institution where we prepare professionals for all different spheres of life and i would say to them 
come to Bethlehem. Bethlehem is the best place for you. Why? Because at Bethlehem, we are a family. You are not treated as a number. Because you know each student is assigned a number. And that is what people refer to you from. You enter until you leave. Here at Bethlehem, I can tell you that we know you by name. We care about you. And everybody here at Bethlehem cares about the students that are within our charge. And so if you come here, other institutions will tell you the same thing, that, oh, this is a place to be. And they'll give you a million and one reason. But I want you to come and experience us first before you make a choice. And I'm certain that you will not go away. The Chinese have a saying that once you come into their business with any money, they're not going to let you leave with it. And we at Bethlehem can tell you that once you come here, you will fall in love with the place and the people. All right, so I am always going to support that. I believe that we should pay it forward and that we rise by lifting others. And so if there's anything that we can do to elevate somebody else by contributing to these scholarships, or even if we're not able to, if, we, if there are other people we can identify who we can encourage to do this, I'd say, let us, you know, collaborate and help somebody else to achieve their dreams. In the end, we would be impacting the growth of our communities, the growth of our country, and that will mean a lot for all of us. So I'd say, let's do this. Yes, I agree with that, and, and I do. And the, I don't know if you have heard about BEMCA Manchester chapter. We have been working. It's just COVID that has slowed us down. In fact, we have a policy recorded that every fundraiser would give the college 60% of the returns, the net returns, and 40% would be used to run our chapter. And um, we, we feel that it is our responsibility to give back. It, it is a mantra of ours, giving back, because we are the heroes that the younger persons will remember who showed them the way, if I may quote or call it so. I must tell you that um, since we have been formed, we have given the college uh, our first gift to the college was um, uh, $250,000 to help to buy a bus. Another time we gave the college some big amount too to help to buy a car that would be the emergency car on campus. We have given scholarships to, um, to students. We have contributed um, money for painting the college. And uh, we have also given a trophy for the best student in professionalism on teaching practice. So we are very, very much involved. And even now we, we have a, a group, a BEMCA group, um, WhatsApp group, where we look out for students. Even today I sent messages out about a past student, an alumna, we call ourselves alums. So, so as to avoid the alumna and the alumnos and the alumni and you know, that sort of thing. I sent out a message to um, the members on the group to contribute towards, you know, toiletries and so on for one one alum's um, nephew who is suffering from serious burns in the university hospital. So we, we just look out for one another. So in addition to giving back, we are very supportive of one another in happy times and in sad times. Okay, past students, near and far, please join this campaign. It is very important, right? Remember, Bethlehem Moravian College contributed to the individuals who we are today. And of course, it's always good to remember where we're coming from. We remember, I know you can remember how life or what life was like for you while you were a student at Bethlehem Moravian College. So please, 
join the campaign you can change lives and of course we wish that you know some past students would have you know came on board during our time so now we have the chance to do that and of course it's a great feeling to know that you have contributed to a positive cause so please join the campaign let's rep team bmc having been a recipient of a scholarship here at Bethlehem Moravian College. I remember when I just started Bethlehem, no school fee. I remember starting Bethlehem with only $500 in my pocket at that time. And with the love, with the being here, you know, it's like being a part of a family. You know, we were never left out. So, Giving back would help other students like myself and many others who struggle but has, have the potential and really want to make something of themselves. So it would be really good to give back. It is interesting that you should ask that because I have a very dear friend to me. Um, we attended high school together and I have always admired her drive to make certain that past students feel connected to their past institution. and so. This friend of mine, she lives in Black River, even though her school is all the way in Spanish Town. She's always doing everything that she can to ensure that the past students contribute or feel as if they are part of our, our, our high school. And I believe too that Bethlehem past students, we are out there in the fields creating waves wherever we are now. But it was because of what we learned while we were here. It is because of the level of training that we were exposed to that has empowered us and given us the ability to be changing lives out there in society. And so you and I know that students are not always rich when they attend institution. You know the realities of the struggles that we face in our modern society, especially with the onset of this coronavirus and even before. So students are always struggling whether financially or otherwise. And in order for you to feel connected to being a part of it, give back what you can afford to give back. We're not saying that you should give back a million dollars, but whatever you can. I learned years ago from one of the former CEO of Grace Kennedy that every little mickle make a muckle. If you can give just a little at a time, you might be surprised of the effect that that little that you are giving will have on those students who are still here. There's this popular story about people going to this, this, this what you call, bottle party where everybody is told to bring a bottle. And when you come, you have to pour the bottle of what you take into this big punch bowl. And everybody decided they're going to play smart. Oh, I am going to take a bottle of water instead of a bottle of rum. And when everybody had the same idea of taking a bottle of water instead of a bottle of rum, and when they went, everybody went into dip to take up some punch to drink. And when they dipped, they realized that it was just water because everybody was thinking along the same line. I do not want us to be like that. I want us to be very purposeful in giving the tangibles that are going to affect the lives of our students because our students always have need. I had needs when I was here and my friends and I had needs, but we helped each other. I always tell one in Southfield that every time I see, I always remember I used to feed me when I was in college if I don't have food. And students are faced with the same reality and probably even harsher realities than what we face. And so if you can help in any way possible to to, to, to support a child in getting a scholarship or even a half scholarship or a bursary, you may never know the effect that you may have on the long-term development of that student. So give, give what you can to our students. Whereas fish sauce shop sells on sifted thistles for thistle sifters to sift. I wish to wish the wish you wish to wish, but if you wish to wish the witch, which is, I will wish to wish you wish to wish. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Peter Piper, pick up pepper. <laughs> oh boy. Peter Piper, pick up. <laughs> Pick up, pepper, pick up, 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 pick
He's a gracious. I wish to wish to wish you wish to wish, but if you wish to wish to which wishes, I won't wish to wish you wish to wish. Uh, Peter Piper picked up peck of pickled peppers. Peter. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh. Can you imagine? Can you can you imagine an imaginary manager? You manager, imagine manager, an imaginary manager. No, it's coming. That's what I want. <laughs> Susie Sea Swordfish Saw Shop says unsisted thistle of thistle shifter of Alright, this one should be Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, how many pickled peppers did Peter Piper pick? How many do does a dew drop drop? If dew drops do drop do, they do drop. They do as do drops drop if do drops do drop do. <laughs> Thank you, Ross. Yes. <laughs> Alright, so the sea where the fish sauce shop sells unsifted thistles for thistle sifters to sift. 